Welcome to the course on Business Information Modeling, Enterprise Information Modeling, and Enterprise-Wide Accounting Information Systems 1. Of course, as you can see already, this course is cross-listed in many different ways, but the subject matter of the course is really common to all of these three areas. Uh, we are just offering them as three different courses for various reasons. Okay, now you might be wondering, because the course is listed as a BACC or an accounting course, as well as a BITM or an information systems course. So you might be wondering what the focus of the course is. The accounting people may rightly be concerned that this is really a technology course that's being foisted upon them. And of course, it's possible that the information systems people may have a feeling that it's an accounting course that's being thrust on them. Actually speaking, neither of these statements is true. The course is primarily a business course. It's a course that talks about how to apply information technology for business. So the focus is business and we are looking at how IT can be applied. And once again, you may ask a question, why do we need to know anything about IT if we are not IT people? Well, information systems really form the nervous system of an organization today. Any no organization can function without proper information systems because organizations have become so big, spread across you know, uh, geographical regions, not just within a country, but across the world with integrated supply chains that span multiple countries and so on. So in such a situation, it's impossible for a company to operate unless there's a free flow of information across the company's operations worldwide. So that's one very important thing that's going on in the world today. And large organizations spend billions of dollars in technology infrastructure. And people from all functional areas, finance, marketing, accounting, supply chain, production, etc., etc., all of them work together to build these information systems. So one side of these information systems, of course, is the technology aspect. But the technology people alone can hardly build these systems. They need very active participation from people who are going to actually use these systems. Technology people may not really understand the business aspects of all of these information systems. So that is why you, as primarily business people, will be participating in information systems building and development efforts. And your inputs can be that much more valuable if you have a broader understanding of business information or enterprise information or enterprise accounting information. So that's the reason we are subjecting you to this course. I will be posting material for this course every week. And uh, this year I'll be posting the material on Tuesdays uh, every week. And along with the material, what you'll find is you'll find the video recording just like what you're seeing now. Plus, you'll find a lot of other handouts and other activities for you to perform. Now, all of these things you need to complete by the following Tuesday and submit them on Blackboard or wherever I ask you to submit them. And then, of course, that Tuesday you'll get the material for the next week and so on. Now, as I've already indicated, although this course is primarily a web-based course, some people are taking it as a hybrid offering with some classroom meetings. This is primarily a web-based course, but there are two days on which you will need to come on to campus. And those will be for to take your midterm exam uh, and the final exam. Or actually speaking, we'll have two exams. There will be no final exam for this course. We'll have two tests and you need to come to campus for both of those tests. Okay, the dates I'll be announcing, but just be sure that you come to campus on those tests. So this is the first week of the course, and uh, we'll be looking at just now the course overview. And then we we'll look at an activity which really simulates a relational database. And you learn how to retrieve information from a relational database. And finally, we'll be looking at the basics of Internet and the web. Once again, it might look as if all of these are technology topics. Some of it definitely is technology, but the core of it 
is actually business as you will very soon see. Okay, now let's take a look at what we mean by information system. Okay, nowadays of course most information systems are web-based in the sense that people access these information systems by using a web browser of some kind. So I'm taking a classic example here, the example of a user who's looking at Amazon's website. So this user is using a browser and using the browser the user is actually looking at Amazon's website and the user does something you know they select a product click on it or do whatever it is that they do and then what happens is the information goes from their browser to the internet because the browser is after all a device that allows us to connect to the internet so it goes to the internet and it then reaches some computer at amazon.com a server computer at amazon.com and that computer retrieves uh, gets whatever request the user had sent perhaps the user had clicked on a particular book and what Amazon has to do now is to go and fetch the details of that book and show it to the user alternately it's possible that the user may have uh, maybe looking at their account and then they selected a particular order that they had placed and they want to see the details of that order that request has now gone to the server and the server now has to pull out the relevant information and send it across to their browser so that the user can see it. So in other words, what is happening is the user is submitting some kind of a request. The request goes across the internet into some server computer and it's now the job of the server computer to respond to this request. Okay, now let's say the request is to see the details of a particular book. Okay, so the user has somehow indicated what book it is and the details of that book is what they are looking for. So now the server computer has to connect using some mechanism to a database on which information about all of the books that Amazon carries are stored. Okay, information is stored about all the books that Amazon carries. In fact, there's also information about who are all the users of the system, uh, information about the authors, about the various purchases that people have made, and so on and so on and so on. A lot of information is there in the database. But now it is the job of the server computer to pull out just that little minuscule amount of information that this user has asked for from the database, get that information, and ship it back to the browser. Okay, so that is why both of these arrows that you see here are bidirectional. So on the one hand, when the user sent the request, the request went this way and went this way. And then finally, when the information is fetched from the database, the, re the response is now going back to the user. Okay, so that is really how a web-based application is actually working. There is a server computer. The server computer gets all the requests from the user. And then these requests are then translated or trans uh, transported to some kind of what is called as an application server which understands the business logic. That application server then goes to the database, picks out information, sends it back to the user. Now don't worry too much if you don't understand some of the terms that I'm using. Soon you will understand all of these terms. Okay, so this is how a business application functions. Now this business application could be an, uh, an e-commerce application like what you're seeing here or it could also be just a regular application inside an organization. For example, somebody has made a purchase and uh, the purchase transaction is entered into the system. So instead of a person looking at a screen here, you may have a particular person entering the details of a purchase transaction and all of that information is then sent to the server and the server does whatever the business needs to do to record the purchase transaction. Okay, so it's any business operation that is being carried out. Now, the reason the course, for, from an accounting perspective, the reason the course is called enterprise-wide accounting information systems is that traditionally accountants were interested only in financial accounting, perhaps management accounting as well. Traditionally, that's all they were interested in. But later on, as businesses started to get more and more computerized, which is that you perform, let's say you uh, record a sales transaction 
and then you make a shipment against that sales transaction. Now, many of these transactions have accounting implications and modern systems, modern enterprise business systems do not make a distinction between the business transaction and the accounting transaction. As the business transaction is carried out, which is that products are shipped out to the customer, alongside these computer systems also make the requisite accounting entries, not just financial accounting, but they also take care of managerial accounting activities. Okay, so everything is integrated into one big application and very often much of financial accounting actually takes place in the background. Now, when such a situation exists, then it's very important for accountants to get involved in how these systems are built so that they can make sure that the accounting implications of business transactions are all properly encoded in the system. Okay, so these days accountants are involved in may all major information systems projects because of the deep underlying accounting implications of what is going on. And the other point is that accountants have broadened their role from just looking at financial accounting to looking at all information systems within organizations because all of them have accounting implications, right? Which is why the course is not called accounting information system. It's called enterprise-wide accounting information systems, right? So we are really looking at enterprise systems in this course. And view that from an information systems point of view, we call them enterprise systems. Viewed from an accounting perspective, we call them enterprise-wide accounting systems, you're really talking about the same thing. This is the point at which information systems and accounting systems have both merged and come together. Okay, so that's what's going on here. And really what this diagram shows so far is the structure of an information system, the technological infrastructure of an information system. However, we are saying that there's a database which contains information about all of these things and a lot more, books and users and authors and purchases and uh, all other kinds of things. Well, it's not enough. When we say something is a database, it's not enough to simply throw in a whole bunch of files and call it a database. Why? Because as you've already seen, let's say that this database has got a huge amount of information, several terabytes of information. Okay, huge, huge amount of information. Now, along comes a user and asks for information about one particular book, which is a small, 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 minuscule fragment of all the information which is in the database. Now, the moment the user comes and asks for information about a particular book, obviously, we need to satisfy that request reasonably quickly, probably much less than a second. The information has to go back. Now, then this server computer is faced with the task of fetching literally a needle from a haystack because you're asking for a small piece of information from amount of whole huge amount of information that is stored. And unless the database is properly designed, you cannot get at this information so quickly. So database design becomes something which is really, really important. From another viewpoint, we have to design databases in such a way that as the business requirements keep changing, as they will, business requirements are never constant, they keep on changing, but we should design our databases in such a way that these changing business requirements don't put the brakes on how systems operate. For example, suppose you have to make a small change and it turns out that to make the change you're going to take several months. And you may have to put down, bring down your system for some time and then bring it back up because you have to make a small change. That is not acceptable. If the database is properly designed, then you can make all of these changes very, very easily. And when I say design of the database, I'm not talking about it from a technical point of view. I'm talking about it from a business point of view. Okay, so clearly this database system here is based on a database design and that database design is really very closely tied to understanding the business. Without a clear understanding of the business, 
no technology person can actually design the database. Okay, so the database design is what drives the actual physical database that exists. And the database design is itself based on the business requirements as I've already pointed out. Okay, so what we have seen so far in this particular figure is we have seen how a business application operates once the application has been properly designed and put into place. But we are also looking at how the, the heart of the application, which is the database, how that gets designed. Okay, so in this course, our main focus of the course is really database design because that is the place at which business people and technology people come together. That's the place at which the business people alone cannot do the job, the technology people alone cannot do the job. Together they have to do the job because the knowledge required exists in both places. Okay, And that's the reason we want to make this the core of the course because no matter who you are, when you work in business organizations, you're going to at some point in time have to participate in enterprise information, uh, design of enterprise information or even selecting an enterprise application. So that forms the core of the course. But my strong belief is unless you look at the complete life cycle of something, you won't really get a grasp for where it stands. If you learn only database design, then when you, you may not get a clear appreciation of where that fits into the overall scheme of things. Okay. So therefore, what I would like to do is to also give you a good feel for complete enterprise applications. That is, I want to show you a little bit about how enterprise applications are completely built. I want to empower you to build simple applications on your own. Nevertheless, the core of the course is still going to be database design and retrieval of information from a relational database. Okay, that's really what this course is all about.